I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us today. Uh, I'm really happy to introduce to you Alan Nielsen and probably one of the more interesting stories we've ever had on Ex-Mormon Files. Yeah. Yours kind of has a ups and downs yeah. of all sorts. So you were, uh, tell us a little bit about first your family, your father and his situation yeah, in I, life. I uh, grew up in the uh, one of the fundamentalist sects. And, um, now did uh, he grow up in a fundamentalist he, no, sect? No, my dad was born and raised in the LDS Church. Here in Utah? Here in Utah, right here in Utah. Okay. Uh, grew up in, and when he was 18 years old, he um, uh, he left the LDS Church because he had heard about some of the ideas of the fundamentalist, and so he he was intrigued by it, and um, and thought and since just, that's what Brigham Young and yeah, and Joseph he, Smith and he had heard said you, know, you had to live. His ancestor had lived polygamy, oh. and that was intriguing to him to think back, and he, he had a forefather had lived polygamy yeah. in, in his heritage in the line of the Mormon. And uh, he thought it was interesting, and he got he heard about this, and it, he just it just kind of got involved. And, mm -hmm. and that now was did he have he a wife man. then, or did he nope. meet a wife in he was, polygamy? He was 18 years old, just a young guy, yeah. and then got uh, familiar with the fundamentalist people. and then Here in, in, so uh, here in Utah? Here in Utah, and then just went headfirst into the fundamentalist world. And interesting. By the time I came around, he, he I was... My mom is a second wife, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, he married uh, her sister first, and then my mom. Wow. Um, so, but I grew up with uh, fundamentalism. I, that's all that I knew. How many kids uh, around, so to speak? Um, well, I, I, I know the total, the total he has, he has 45 kids. Oh, my goodness. But I don't know, you know. How many were when I was you? young, I can't remember the exact yeah. amount that yeah. was there at the time, but yeah. there was always a lot. When I was younger, um, I, I lived in a different place from the other wife and her children, and oh. and, and I, I kind of just thought of she was like my aunt because I called her aunt, you know, and oh, okay. and uh, and then we would go over to their house over there, and it was yeah. kind of like my cousins, you know, yeah. and then it was later on that we actually moved into the house and oh. and became like a. A oh. full family and public schools, I guess. And yeah, and it's interesting because on um, the public schools, because um, it wasn't too many years prior to that that that, that uh, they had a raid down in Arizona where they broke up families, and right. so they were doing some kind of they were, had their eye on the polygamous people, and some of them were you know prosecuted, and and so they were afraid that that would happen again, and so I went by a fictitious last name. Oh, you did? Yeah, I did. Um, and my last name was Collins. And did you get to call your dad, dad? Oh, yeah, at home. At home okay. it was very much normal, but when we went to school, the public school system. So, so um, my dad broke us, broke us up by the, you know, whoever was from my mom. We went to the school on the north, and oh. all the other children went to the school on the south. <laughs> and we walked to school to the north, and they walked to the school on the south. And they kept, oh. they kept the, 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 the name. Nielsen, Nielsen and I went by Collins, oh. even though I knew it wasn't my real name. But we were, we were, you know, we were taught that yeah. that's how you had to do it, or or they would 
you know, Break throw our father in jail up. and yeah. all kinds of things like that. And, and really I lived with, th there was just a lot of fear in growing up, fear of the world, fear of what they were, everybody was going to do to you, with, you and know, that, if they knew your lifestyle, and that was kind of the, the environment that I grew up and in. And mom and dad kept kind of reinforcing that oh, fear, absolutely. if you yeah, don't they, do this, and lo if you don't keep the Collins name, yes. this will happen. Well, they, 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 we understood at home that we weren't, but when you were at school, you don't talk about it, and you don't invite friends over, you don't really? go over to a friend's house, and so because of that, it creates a very awkward position for you to um you know at school to try and build friends and things yeah. like that because it's like you can't have them over to your house you can't go to their house and then it kind of isolates you and, wow. you and you start feeling that isolation and you did this until you were 18 yeah and as i as, when i grew as i grew up obviously it got more troublesome to me because they they believed in like placement marriage and things like that yeah. and I, I didn't like that idea just on a doctrinal basis i guess did you you believe the Book of Mormon to be true at this yeah, point, yeah, and we Joseph were, Smith, Joseph and Smith, Book of Mormon, all the all the things that uh, that the the average Mormon would hear about the the basics of the Mormon faith. We just we adding those on two, the polygamy yeah. section one thirty two. Yeah. However, there was other things. You know, we were, I was taught from the time I was little about Adam God. I was taught. Um, so you they know, still believe that. Yeah, so. I was taught the whole Adam. I, I I remember believing as a young person that Adam was our father and our God, and that was just what I was taught from a very young age. I be, I believed that that polygamy was the way that that we were supposed to live. That Jesus was a polygamist. That that I mean, this is just this was common teaching yeah. that I believed. You know, and uh, I'd even heard about blood atonement. You know, when oh, I was yeah. a young person. Yeah. Yeah. All these kinds of things, and and the the idea of the of the blacks and the priesthood, yeah. you know, when I was I think this happened when I was about t ten or eleven or twelve somewhere when this when the LDS Church uh, extended the black to the priesthood in right. 1978, 78. it was a big deal. Sure. In in the fundamentalist group, they were uh, th they this was like a so huge no, leap of apostasy right, by the L by the LDS Church, church. Yeah. and I remember the leader one of the leaders in the in the uh, the, or, the group that I was part of, uh, at that time, you know, preaching over the pulpit, and he said, anybody that mingles his seed with that of the black person, he said, death on the spot, and he would pound the pulpit like well, that. Well, and that's what Brigham Young said. I mean, many yeah. quotes, Orson Pratt, Brigham Young, others said Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Where did Jesus fit into this program? You know, I, I, I heard a little bit about Jesus. <laughs> a little bit? Just a very, very little bit. Yeah. Uh, we had a picture of him on the wall. Did you? Um, we, you know, that my mom would sometimes talk about, you know, what, you know, Jesus taught us to love love each other and a few yeah. things like that. That was about the extent of Jesus that I had as a fundamentalist uh, Mormon. It just wasn't, wasn't something that I really understood and wasn't my taught goodness. that much. So the Bible, do they go to the Bible much? They didn't go to the Bible much at all. Yeah. Um, Which is, sounds pretty typical yeah. of a Mormon upbringing. I mean, it's there. It's right. a few quotes here and there. But. It was just, it was a very oppressive way to live. And um, wow. and it wasn't a, a happy childhood for for being able to make friends and associates because oh, you, yeah. you were weird and you were you dressed weird and you, you know, it was just hard. Wow. Hard way to live and hard way to grow up. Yeah. So what happens at 18? You at 18 years old, I I I got so tired of it that I was in in a rebellious state, and and that rebellious state really started when I was about 14, 15. Mm -hmm. But it escalated by the time I was You're probably not alone in all that. Yeah. But yeah. But by the time I was by the time I was 18, I was just like I'm done with this. And yeah. I had told my dad probably a year prior that I would. I would choose hell because this wasn't, oh. this just wasn't the life I wanted. This can't be. And, um, and so I, I pretty much moved out when I was 18 years old. And, and then it's like, now sky's the limit. I can do whatever, whatever I want. Oh, know, dear. Stuff like that. So. so did you go through a period of yeah, transition? Yeah, there was did a you? time when it's uh, a couple of years where I kind of lived somewhat of a Edenist lifestyle. You know, yeah. it, was, it wasn't horrible, but it just like, you know, go drinking and partying and just have fun and just whatever I could yeah. do that I thought was exciting. In your setup, you were here in Salt Lake. Yeah. So you probably had an easier time accepting, well, television, I guess, and and just the social aspects of, of things where, at least from some of the stories we hear from Colorado City and other places, that they are a little more 
ostracized. They don't even understand television and yeah, the, and and all that has and, been really more latter things that have gone on since Warren yeah. Jeffs and and actually his father Rulin actually really started. He was the one that started it, and then Warren just escalated it to. Yeah. Uh, just an absolutely insane level as it is today, you know. So I, I guess I mean you just had an easy, maybe an easier transition into normal culture. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, yeah. Well, at least that's a blessing right. of sorts, but because there's enough stress out here as it is, just trying to live yeah. life. You find a wife, do you? Yeah, uh, you know, she had come from uh, polygamy, but it wasn't. Oh. It, it wasn't the extreme yeah. uh, way, and they had a little bit more. They. You know, they had a little bit more openness, and they and they allowed you to choose your own partner. And, then, and did you go back into her polygamy then? Or? Well, I I associated with her family, uh -huh. and would have conversations with them, and kind of, it kind of I kind of moved back into a religious atmosphere, and 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 I kind of gravitated towards what they were mm -hmm. believing. You know, yeah. and and it seemed to work better for me. Yeah. And uh, but we got married. Um. And I, I began to, it wasn't too long after being married, I began to even be a little bit dissatisfied with some of their, their ways and things like that. And yeah. um, it just still the same Joseph Smith. Yeah, it just wasn't working. And so I really young. spent a lot of time s sorting out what the truth was because I, you know, we started having children. And, yeah. and um, as my children started growing up, I was like, okay, I'm going to need to be baptizing them. That's what you do. You know, I got to. And, and they were starting to get closer to that age, and so I started studying. But I started studying the, the LDS church from Wilford Woodruff, because that's where the manifesto okay. was signed, and that's where, you know, in the teachings that I grew up with, that's where the church kind of so more departed from. Yeah, church, and so I, I really did a lot of studying from that time frame. Yeah. And... Uh, and I, I, I really just studied hard. I, I, mean, I was pulling up all kinds of stuff, and I was reading about how the manifesto was not a revelation from God. And I, and I could see that at a young age. I was just in my twenties, yeah. but I could see this is, this is not a God wasn't behind this. And I could see that, and and there was so much, uh, so much subterfuge and all kinds of things going on with this polygamy stuff that was supposed to be stopped in 1890. And I had hard evidence that it wasn't. Yeah. And I didn't know what to do with that. Yeah. Up until 1904. Yeah. I, did, I didn't understand it? what to do with that yeah. because I, and, and I was very confused. Um, but, but, but in the meantime, my children kept growing up and it's like, wow, what am I going to do? And I had, uh, my wife's, um, her uh, uncle was a member of the church. Mm. Had some conversation with him, and he would tell him tell me about his missionary experiences. And you know, it just seemed like maybe the church maybe. has got something. Um, and th things just started to look yeah. like this might be an avenue. So you end up joining. The and I did. We joined the church. church. I, I I set everything on the shelf. You know, the proverbial yeah. shelf that yeah. everybody talks about. And yeah. I didn't. It didn't just go away. No. But, and I never solved it. Did. Yeah. I just put it on the shelf yeah. because I, I, I was concerned about what I was going to do. And uh -huh. so we did join the church and, you know, I mean, that's... You end up getting married in the Manti Temple or yeah. sealed. You, we were you sealed. Just, had your sealed, in, yeah. children sealed there? We, we had our children sealed in Salt Lake Temple. Oh, okay. We, I, I just liked the Manti Temple. I thought it was yeah, a cool a temple, temple and, yeah. and, and I liked the architecture design sure. and it was kind of out in the country. And yeah. I thought, let's, let's just go there. So we went to the Manti Temple to be sealed, and then the next day we was had our children sealed to us uh, in the Salt Lake the Temple. Salt Lake. All most of them, there was still uh, okay. two that haven't been born yet. So, so again, no question about how truthful, true the church was. I mean, uh, no. Joseph what Smith, I really Book understood was the Joseph Smith. I believed 100% Joseph Smith through. Uh, it, it got hazy when it, when the manifesto came, but mm -hmm. I was, I was like feeling pretty confident. Well, I think I think for some reason God must have allowed allowed the church to do this and I'm going to be here. The current prophet can make a change. Yeah. And, yeah. But I, but I completely believed that, that Joseph yeah. Smith was who he said he was. The Book yeah. of Mormon was what it was. Mm -hmm. And I, and I remember really doing some serious study of the Book of Mormon. I did the praying about it, Moroni yeah. ten four, and felt like God had told Give me it was true. Answer. And I had feelings, you know, the, the yeah. feelings that they talk about all the time. 
Jesus any different than he had been in polygamy? It, in the Mormon church, there was a little more Jesus than oh. the fundamentalists. Okay. There was. Um, it, uh, which, which was an adjustment to, to hear a little bit more about Jesus. Um, but it still, there was, the problem that I had was, is I knew a lot of the history of the LDS church and, and no one really wanted to answer questions when they'd come up. And, and I just, <laughs> people, when I would bring it up to some people, they, it was a little awkward to everybody yeah. and they didn't really want to yeah, talk about it. their antennas are up pretty Yeah, pretty and, and, and I started to pick up, oh, this is not something that you would bring up in a gospel doctrine class or, right, right. or you would even talk personally with people about yeah. it. They, they, they would be concerned about your salvation or something like that. So. Now, you were very active, though, for, yeah. how many, for how many years? Well, I think it was around 20, 21 years. Uh, I just kind of threw myself, I'm coming to be a good Mormon. We'll yeah. raise these kids and, and just... And you did all the callings. Did the callings. I elders Quorum president. was an Elders Quorum yeah. president. Uh, yeah. Served in the, as a uh, ward missionary. Wow. Um, some Sunday school callings Gee, and yeah. just I mean I, I believe that it was that that it was the right thing to do. Your and wife was with you and the kids yeah. and everything and, and yeah, she was there and she was happier there because there wasn't polygamy, you know, and yeah. polygamy was always an issue with uh, her yeah. upbringing and so now we're in the church they're not openly practicing it. So right. you know, we will in heaven but not yeah. not right, not right yeah. now. So then, what happens? Well, uh, the, talking about yeah, adjustments and major changes. It, it's kind of it's kind of interesting because, as time goes on, you you almost start becoming like just a cultural Mormon in a way. You just kind of start going through the motions, and 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 I wasn't really feeling uh, spiritually filled. Just going through the motions. Yeah, I was going yeah. through the motions, yeah. and so I ended up kind of just pursuing other other things, you know, to kind of fill the void and, and, and just let time get away and it was involved in other stuff and, and, um, and you know, it's, it's a, there's a lot more to the story that there's obviously not time to go into the details, but um, a few years ago I started being bothered by some of the things that were going on and um, I would see, you know, the essays started coming out. Ah. And I was very familiar with some of these fundamental teachings oh, sure. about blacks and the priesthood, about the There's polygamy, several on polygamy and, yeah. and Adam God and stuff like that. I don't know if they've done one on Adam God or not, but uh, but I remember reading the one on the, the blacks and the priesthood, yeah. and, and I remember saying, this is just deception. You know, they're they're saying this stuff, but they're 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 not telling the truth. They're not being totally and honest. And they're lying in a sense. Yeah. And I just like it was, it was very disturbing to me. Wow. That and the polygamy one. I knew the real story. And yeah. It's like I was raised on the real story. <laughs> this was, yeah, it, it, yeah. And so it's like it started to concern me. And and I noticed that, like I say, the the business corporate nature of the church, as as, you know, it just seemed to operate like a corporation. And and there there it yeah. was, it was it it felt so regimented that the spirit I didn't really feel sometimes the spirit in some of these things and so uh, something was missing and I started to feel it and I kind of just really became almost like a cynical Mormon I started like not really wanting you to go to like church. you feel like God was talking to you or you just felt At that like... time no no I didn't I, probably now you realize I, God Oh has looking his back <laughs> it's a whole different thing I can yeah. I can see it differently but, but you but, just became a little cynical and a, yeah yeah and 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 then uh, like I mentioned before, my wife had always had trouble with polygamy, and so um, I was working at this job, and and I had some time to do a little study, and and in the evening while she was working, and and uh, so I thought I'm gonna you know I'm gonna go look into Joseph Smith's polygamy and just kind of show her that it was that it was somehow God was there God much of that was, in in fundamentalism? Did they uh, in oh yeah polygamy? I, I totally understood and they, knew that Joseph Smith was a polygamist. Oh okay yeah totally. you knew that from when you were before eighteen yeah oh, yeah okay. I knew that I was, I it was not I, I didn't understand yeah. the details yeah. but I, but I knew that he was a polygamist I, okay um, and so I said I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to look into this and just kind of show her that what he did was for a good purpose you know something yeah. that's oh like, and and that was the you got that was in trouble the by studying yeah. <laughs> So when I when I started to look into all the the stuff, I was just 
I was appalled. Uh, yeah, just I was completely too. appalled. I was too. I remember feeling like I, when I got done reading some of this stuff about Helen Mark Kimball, um, Henry Jacobs, and this whole thing with Zina Huntington, and yeah. and and the the Partridge Sisters. I mean, there there's you could go on and on with these stories. Yeah. I felt sick, literally sick, and I thought, this is wrong. This is wrong, and it wasn't. It wasn't easy because it, it was terrifying. Yeah. It was literally terrifying to to realize to think the possibility. That this, because I literally thought Joseph Smith, like I was taught, he was next to Jesus. I mean, he was right up there. And some well, and the sword, some ways, sword was like drawn, was and yeah, the sword was drawn, mm -hmm. and he had to. Yeah, in some ways, even yeah. we have to pass by Joseph Smith. Yeah. They say. So that was very difficult. That was a hard thing to look at, and I didn't really want to. I didn't want to look at it. I really didn't. Yeah. But it was something that I couldn't just dismiss. You know, I, I marvel sometimes how people can hear these things and just, oh, it doesn't pertain to me. It doesn't <laughs> matter to me, and I, I, I just marvel at this. Yeah. Um, Did you share with your wife? Yeah. And kids? I I didn't at the time with my kids. Mm -hmm. um, I did share with my wife it I didn't I didn't do it in the best way at the time and she kind of thought that I was actually in favor of Joseph Smith when I was trying to tell her this kind of stuff and it didn't turn out too well oh. <laughs> at that time yeah um, but over time I, I just became really bothered at the, in, in being a Mormon I didn't want to go I was looking for a way to get out but I was I was really terrified to leave the mm -hmm. LDS faith because I have family members that have left, and met, some have become atheists. Some are into the New Age, spiritual, mystical ideas. And that kind of, you know, I, I had looked into it. I had been exposed to a little bit of that stuff, and it, yeah. it just, it was kind of scary to me. And I thought, I don't, I don't want to go there. Well, I know our time, unfortunately, is moving so fast. Could, I know you finally came to Christ. Would you yeah. like to, would you yeah. care and, to and share how that, how really, that actually And how happens? that really happened was, is... Um, uh, just one one evening, I was just through the internet looking some things, and I stumbled onto Sacred Groves website, and I thought, oh, you know, Sacred oh, Groves, this is Street interesting. Church, I'll, I'll go take a look at it. And I started watching some videos of uh, different people that were had former Mormons, and it just it just took me back. And and I, I remember thinking that night, feeling like I could be a Christian. You know, it was like door number two. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's, it's an like, option here. Yeah, I it's an option. I had never really given it the thought until that time. I have to agree with that whole yeah. mentality there. Yeah. yeah. I just had not thought about it, and I thought, I could be a Christian. But it gave me courage. And I thought, okay, I don't have to be going to New Age. I don't have to be an atheist. I can be a Christian. You could actually trust God. I, I mean. could actually be a Christian. And yeah. so, so I st it gave me the courage to look into more of the LDS and... And uh, and then I was able to just completely see what was really going on, and realize that it was just false, and it was hard for me to say that Joseph Smith was a false prophet. That was oh, hard. Yeah, I, I, I just, remember the you day. You know, you you would think it wouldn't be, but it's hard. It is. It was hard to say he's a false prophet, but. Well, you know, I finally got there. I got there intellectually first. But doesn't it answer every question you had? All that Absolutely. stuff that's on the shelf, it answers it every question every that's out question. there. Every single question well, it answers. And it's such a freedom and a joy. So do you feel like that was your moment? That then? was the moment of, of, of turning and realizing I could be a Christian. But then I started to read the New Testament. Oh boy. And it just came alive. It just literally jumped out at me on the pages. And I remember just going, I... This wasn't in here. It truly wasn't in here. I, I was just so shocked at what I was finding, and I and I, you know, like so many people have said before, you just you just can't get enough. I know. And it's just like I got to read this some more. I got to read some more, and 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 I would read it, and it would just what completely. Have I yeah, yeah, I would say, I didn't know this gospel. When I understood the gospel of grace, when I started to real realize that, I went like. No one told me this. No. I did not know this gospel of grace. Don't you think, how could I have been in life here in these religion, this religion for And when 40, I found out that years. Jesus was God, I, could, I was just overwhelmed yeah. to the point of, I, I didn't know it. To the point, I, I, I remember it was in the middle of the night. I, I just, 
I was working a night, an, on a night shift job, and, and I just felt an overwhelming urge. I needed to pray to Jesus. Mormons don't do that. No. But I did. I just, I felt like I got I to gotta pray to Jesus. So you did? And I did. Because it's like I had, I felt like I had to acknowledge him as who he really was. And thank him. And thank him. And it just, it just was an amazing experience. And from that moment on, it, it, my life has just completely changed. <laughs> it's completely changed. It, it's, it, it's amazing. It's totally amazing. And it's been a, it's been a, it's been a wonderful journey, but it is it is difficult because and it's only been a year and a half. Yeah, or so yeah, about a year and a half. Yeah. It's been it's been wonderful. Uh, we're able to uh, read the Bible. We're part of this Bible study group. We're just really walking through uh, different uh, books of the Bible and just really getting a solid understanding of God's word and it's ministering There's to us. There's such a peace though and a freedom and. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. You've, yeah. You sense that now, and oh, with totally the, sense with the it. grace that He paid for the sins. And yeah, and then when you think the of guilt. of Jesus, you, it's just like it's like I didn't know I didn't know about this person, and now now that's what you want to build your whole life around, and and it's just yeah. it's just a it, it. I just feel like it's completely brand new to me from from what I came from and and believed and was taught and everything is so different. And you've been through the temple, you've mm -hmm. been active, you've been in, of course, polygamist and in current Mormon, mainstream Mormonism. It, he's just not there. No, he's not there. We're just it's missing it's really sad because there's so many people that they just don't know that. Well, just a second or two left. Your kids, uh, I know are, a lot of them are probably still very active. Yeah, what, most of them are, uh, four of them are active. Anything you'd like to share with them if they happen to listen to this? I, I just trust Jesus. He, he really is enough. We don't, you don't need prophets. Jesus is you don't enough. need, you don't need a high priest other than Jesus. He's our high priest. He's our prophet. He's our yeah. king. We don't, you don't need nothing else. And if you, if you can turn to Jesus, and and follow him, build a relationship with him. It, it will just dramatically change your life, and I and I wish that they could really get that. And I pray all the time that God will draw them to Him, like He did me. I keep praying that some scripture, or somebody, or something mm -hmm. will hit my kids right in the. I do too. And just so that they can feel this joy and have this understanding of the gospel of grace that Paul taught. Right. In the Bible, it's not like we made it up. <laughs> That's it's right. in the Bible. That's right. But like you said, we just never read those scriptures. No, they don't, we don't. They just who put them in here? You know. <laughs> okay, Alan, oh, thanks yeah. so oh, much betcha. for sharing. It's such a wonderful story, and um, gosh, I just hope others will feel that same. I do too. See you next week.